Welcome to Keeping It Young Podcast, conversations about marriage, family, and ministry life. I'm Dave. And I'm Beth Lee. And we are the Youngs. We're so glad you joined us today. Welcome to Keeping It Young, and hope you're enjoying this little series we've been doing. Uh, we've loosely entitled Practical Advice for Training Our Children. Yes, and I think we're going to wrap it up today. Yes, we are. And we are coming very soon towards Thanksgiving. Yay, I'm so and excited. We have a special Thanksgiving podcast coming up, and we're looking forward to sharing that with you as well. So join us next week for that special episode. And today, let's just jump in here and wind things up with, we're really, really kind of bringing things together on how to handle special situations in training our children. Right. There are always, when we are out speaking on the home, especially David mostly does a lot of speaking on training children. So when we are out and about, we get a lot of questions about, well, what about this? Well, what about that? Have you talked about this or have you thought about that? And, and there's so many, can we say caveats to, yes. oh, but training children, yeah, you could do that with this child, but what about this child over here? Or So we're not going to address certainly everything in this episode we may coming up in the new year address a few things um, because we've got some things in the works for a whole new series about training children but these are just some things that we have had mentioned before and so just some things that may be helpful for those of you who have listened to this series and been like wow i need to catch up so these are just for you absolutely and and for the record too you'll find oh goodness three years worth of podcast episodes on our keeping it young podcast.com website yes, yes and there's a search button there go in there and type in you know different if, if there's a question you have right. nothing i believe that there are many there there are any number of situations that are unique Yes. Any number of situations, you know, that that one family differs from another family in this area or that area. Mm -hmm. And and most people run immediately to the exceptions yes. and the special scenarios. <laughs> yes. We do believe that every exception and every special scenario is addressed by truth. Mm -hmm. And we do believe that even sometimes in the special case scenario, the truth is obvious. Right. You know, what, what, what do you do if your, your child is struggling in some area with a, you know, emotional challenge or, yes. you know, a behavioral challenge? Yes. Well, the, the answer is still the same. You yes. train, you mm -hmm. train, you train, you train. And so these, these special situations are a little bit of an overview. We can't deal with them all. Bethley's right there. But we, we wanted to at least just answer three questions here. And the first one, let's jump in. Are you ready? Yes. All right. The first one is, what do you do if you haven't been training? I'm sorry. Bless your heart. <laughs> <laughs> but it's an easy thing to do parents, isn't it? There it is. are times we, we were dedicated to training our children. We still are dedicated to training Charity, who is still in our home. But there were times where in the midst of life and busyness, all of the sudden some attitude would come out or some behavior would come out or, um, you know, some unkindness. And we would think, where did that come from? How did we miss that? And we would just have to back things up and begin training again because, you know, in our thinking, we were like, we are training our kids, but uh-oh, what just happened? Yes. And I go even a step farther because sometimes in the busyness of our lives, our ministry was always busy and, and still is. We've always been daylight right. to dark mm -hmm. and evening services, morning services, right. travel schedule. It's always been a whirlwind. But sometimes we would observe something and, you know, kind of make a mental note. Hmm, you know, that's that's not the best. And but but not the time. Didn't take the time to deal with it. True. And and so there's always these scenarios. Yes. And always, then later always. it comes out again. Or it could be that you've been listening to these episodes and thinking to yourself, oh, I haven't been doing any of this. Maybe I need to catch up. So yes, absolutely. So what do we do? Uh, first of all, let's do this one. If you have not been training or see an area where you're like, oh boy, I've got to, you know, wow, then start here. Pray for wisdom. Yes. And we, how many times have we said that on this podcast? Right. Go to James chapter one and claim the truth of God's word there. The promise of God that if we lack wisdom, yes, we can ask God. 
and yes. and God will give it to us, you know, give it to us liberally. Absolutely. And so he says, well, what does that mean? Well, it means you pray, yes. but it also means you look for the truth. Yes. This is not just, you know, an arbitrary idea that God give me wisdom and boom, all of a sudden I am filled with glorious knowledge. <laughs> right. No, it's that God give me wisdom to find the answer within mm-hmm. the realm of truth. Yes. And what you do is you're seeking God for his direction for wisdom so you mm-hmm. can understand Right. In a world that is filled with every possible answer, in how many different answers can you find to one question? Right. That are not even on the answers aren't even on the same planet. Not mm-hmm. you know something. Right. If you has Google to be something, right or wrong. yes. <laughs> and so we go to God's word with that. As we're praying for wisdom, we say, "Okay, God, what does your word say about this situation, and how mm. can I apply the principles of your word absolutely to this situation?" And I'm mm-hmm. praying. Praying for wisdom is praying that God will direct me to truth. And it's also praying that God will give me the strength to enact. Yes. I remember one of our friends who used to pray, God, give me the wisdom to know what is right, but then give me the courage to do it. Yes. And I would even add to that, give me the strength to do it. Mm -hmm. So you start, what what do you do if you haven't been training? You start by praying for wisdom. Right. And it could be too that, and I know this has happened in our lives before, that we just know something's not right with a child. You just know something's not right. And so you do pray. You just ask the Lord to give you wisdom. And we would even say that to our children. Um, I was just with Matt and Kareth, our son and daughter-in-law, um, visiting them and helping them with their sweet little James Russell, who is at that time was just a month old. And um, we were talking about how that even though he's a preemie, that probably with his long arms and legs, he is going to be a very tall uh, young man, just like his dad, Matt, is over six feet tall. And his, his grandfather and on his, his mom's yes. side is six eight, right? <laughs> yes, yes. So a lot of uh, tallness in that family. But anyway, uh, Matt was joking how that um, often, once he got taller than me, I would have him sit down so that I could give him a stern talking to. And he said he remembers me even one time coming in and just looking up at him and putting my hands up on his cheek and looking him very seriously in the face and saying, Matt, I know that there's something not quite right in your life. And I just want you to know that I am praying that the Lord will reveal it to me and your father. And I love you. And I hope you sleep well. (laughs) And then she went to bed and left him there to think that over. And so uh, his wife, Kara, said, so did you sleep okay? And he said, no, it scared me to death. (laughs) So anyway, all of that to say that even if there's an area where you know there needs to be training, but you're not quite sure what it is, just pray because pray, pray, the pray. Lord mm-hmm. will reveal it to you. And then, then we would add to that, not only pray for wisdom, but formulate a plan. Yes. And, and by that, uh, you know, here's an area where you recognize, wow, we need to make some changes. We need to improve an area. Well, keep it simple and be united. You know, if, if you and your husband, you and your wife are on the same team, Yes. And you're united in the expectation. Mm-hmm. That is massive. Yes. You that, need to communicate with each other because if mom all of a sudden is like, oh goodness, our children have no manners yes. whatsoever. And she is just getting all uptight about it. But dad is like, it's no big deal. You you do need to have a conversation yeah. about it. And you it. never want to catch the other parent off guard. You never want the other parent going, what in the world are you doing? <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Well, what happened to you? <laughs> Why is this all of a sudden important? So you have to formulate a plan mm-hmm. and and keep it simple, but be united so that you know this is what we've got to work on. And you talk about it. What together? What should we do? How can we improve right. this and area? Prioritize. So let's say you haven't done any training at all, and you have an eight year old that is completely out of control, and you're like, okay, this child doesn't have self control. They don't have self denial. What are we going to do? Then sit down with your husband, pray about it together, and then come up with some priorities. If you turn your child's life totally upside down, that's not going to help you. So you do need a few things that you're going to sit down with and we're going to talk about this in a minute, and you're going to say, okay, these are the things that mom and dad have been slipping in, but we are going to start demanding them. Yeah, and and you know, you say, well, I, I don't know if my kid is doing well or not. Well, evaluate. Mm-hmm. Are they whiners? Right. Are they complainers? Are they mm-hmm. negative? Are they mean to other people? Do they respond when spoken to? Right. Do you have to yell to get them to respond? And if you do have to get on to them, do they, you know, are they bratty? Mm-hmm. 
you know, is, is this the way I'd want my child to respond if they were 28 work? If, if my employee responded this way, would I mm, fire them? Right. And what we're talking about is consistently, if you are in the yeah. business of training your children, that will happen every once in a while. You will have a child sass you, but you are already on it. Yes. But if, if your child has not been trained at all, mm-hmm. you got to pray for wisdom, you formulate a plan, and then you carry that plan out by having a conversation. Yes. And what you do is you make it very, very serious. You schedule it. There's some things we have to talk about. So after mm-hmm. school on Thursday, we'll have dinner, and then we're going to sit down in the living room, we're going to have a talk. Yes. And, and what your child will do is, is they'll be like, what, what are we going to talk about? What, 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 what? Right. Say, no, we'll talk on Thursday. <laughs> mm-hmm. And give it time to formulate. And then you sit down and you just say, here are the changes that we're going to be making. Right. Provide a timeline for that. Say, we're, we're going to be implementing these things over the next three months yes. or over the next six weeks. Right. And what you do is you clarify expectations. From now on, this is how we expect you to behave. Yes. This is what we expect you to do. Mm-hmm. And, and you clarify and determine ramifications. Mm-hmm. If you don't, this is what the ramification will be. Right. You answer any questions. And you may have the, a child, you know, who is not trained at all, may just absolutely fall apart and, and go ballistic. Yes. Well, be prepared for that. Mm-hmm. And and what that tells you is that then this is doubly important that we do this now. Right. And so you determine the ramifications, but you also determine the celebrations. And this absolutely. is kind of funny as we were working through this one, because I said, you know, <laughs> we're going to go to Disney. And uh, my wife raised her eyebrows at me and said, I was thinking, let's go for yogurt or ice cream. <laughs> let's go for frozen yogurt. Well, I was thinking on a budget, you know, if your child is doing well with your training, probably you're not going to just up and go to Disney unless you have an amazing budget. But <laughs> that was kind of funny, though, just the, the difference in our thinking on that one. Yes. But uh, you have a conversation. That's what you do if if you haven't been training but need to pick it up. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. Any, any other thoughts? And we'll add well, these next. Even even if, if you recognize that there's a little area where you just have been lacking, I know sometimes in in our family, let's say with family devotions, we need to have a time where we are training our children in the Word of God when we're training them in prayer, and we have just gotten too busy sometimes. So we'll get busy, 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 and tired, 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 or whatever, and and all of a sudden, we're just like, oh, goodness, we need to do this. And I'm, I'm thinking of when our children were little. Yes. And, um, you know, sometimes it was just easier to get them in bed and <laughs> forget about it sure. because we were tired. And all of a sudden, both of us would be like, you know what, we need we need to do this. We right. need to be going over their verses. We need to be training them in the Word of God. And so then you do have a conversation. You just, you know, at the breakfast table, you say, you, you know what, we just haven't been doing that. And that's not right. And this is what we're going to do. And then you're children start to expect it again. Right. So here's another one. What do you do if you have a divided family or a Mm. blended family? This one is so prevalent in our culture. And we're not going to say a lot here because if you go to our website and type in the search engine, the idea of the word blended, we do have entire series uh, and, and, you know, entire episodes in in regards to this matter. Yes. But because it is so prevalent, we thought it worth mentioning here because we're talking about handling special situations. And this one does come up frequently. It's like, well, that's nice, but my husband and I are divorced or my wife and I are divorced. And, you know, my spouse thinks this is okay, but I don't. And, And when you're in that kind of a situation, it is very rare for a divorced couple to be on the same page yes. in so many of these areas. Mm-hmm. But there are things you can do. And again, we would start here. You should pray for wisdom. Absolutely. Just go to God and seek God and seek help and look for counsel and go to God's word, pray for wisdom. Mm -hmm. But the second thing is just huge. Communicate as much as possible. Absolutely. So if you have an expectation of, of your children you know, and they're going to spend the weekend with your, you know, your former spouse, Mm -hmm. then communication is the only option you have there. Yes. And you never order. You do not have the right to say, this is what I expect you to do. Right. You, you, the only way you can handle that now is to say, do you think you would be willing to help me in this area? Yes. Could we do this as Susie's parents or as John's parents? Mm Mm-hmm. And, and your spouse may say, absolutely not. I think that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. Mm-hmm. Then at that point, uh, you can either uh, choose a different option 
Mm -hmm. Let's go with a different alternative there. Do you have a better alternative or a different one? Not in anger. You have to really guard these communications because this is a, divorces already leave frustrations and angst and and problems in our emotions and our heart and our feelings towards each other. Mm -hmm. But, but as much as possible, stay controlled and say, well, what could we do instead? Yes. And, and, you know, and if you have the situation where the spouse is absolutely determined to do the opposite of what you say, Mm -hmm. then what you have to do there is you have to work in the framework of your responsibility and possibility. Right. You cannot force a former spouse to do what you want that spouse to do. True. But you can, every time the child is in your care, you Mm -hmm. can be training, you can be teaching, Mm -hmm. you can be loving, you can show your child, this is my expectation. Right. Without undermining the authority and affection that they have for their And you never, you do not want to put each other, you know, your children against one. uh, Absolutely. You just don't want that. You don't Mm -hmm. want that terrible divide there. Mm -hmm. The divide is there. There's nothing you can do about it. Mm -hmm. So don't make it a matter of, well, you know, your dad lets you do this or your mom, but not in this house. No. What you say is, you know, well, hey, I know you love your your dad and your dad. This is how mm-hmm. he does it. Yes. But when you're here, this is how we do it. Right. And and some parents are like, well, but what if my child decides to leave and just go be with dad? Mm. Well, at that point, there's nothing you can do. True. Except keep the door open, love mm-hmm. the child, yes. let the child know you love them, and you still send presents, you still celebrate, you still call, you still talk, you still right. check up on them. How are mm-hmm. you doing? And, you know, because at that point you can't win that. True. So it's a special situation, but Mm -hmm. you stay with it. You pray for wisdom. You communicate as much as possible and you work in the framework of your responsibility and possibility. Yes. Any, any further thought? I would just say, don't be unreasonable. There are some things that you do in your house just because that's the way you want your household run. But when they go to your former spouse's house, they don't have to do it that way. Maybe it has something to do with dishes. Maybe you say no dirty dishes in the sink. Absolutely. We have a dishwasher. You put them in the dishwasher. And maybe your spouse is like, I don't care if there's dishes all over the sink and all over the counter. I don't care. And so, but don't be unreasonable about that. That's not a big deal. All you say is, I know, but when you're here, do it this way. Don't make that demand on your spouse because that's their household. They can run it the way they want to. So that's the idea of working in the framework of your responsibility and possibility. Yes. Okay. And so let's give one last one here. Just special situations. What do you do if you haven't been training? What do you do if you have a divided or blended family? Mm -hmm. And and this one, this one's going to take, you know, the whole rest of the time. What do you do if you have adult children who need help? Mm. And by that, I mean, in your opinion, they need help. Yes. You may have an adult child who thinks I am fine. Get out of my life and leave me alone. But as (laughs) As a parent, you're going, things aren't well. Yes. And and they're not going the right direction and they're not making wise choices. What do you do? Mm. And Beth and I would give you five quick answers here. In the first place, goodness, pray for them. Absolutely. I I guess that's a given. It should be. I'm of the opinion that a lot of times we say, pray for them, please pray for my children. It's a whole lot easier to say those words and talk about praying for your children than to stop everything and specifically mm-hmm. on purpose talk to God about your children. Right. Maybe set aside specific times in which you're just going to drop everything and kneel. Mm-hmm. And maybe even make a list. You're going to pray this every day, you know, and, and just open the piece of paper, pull it out of your wallet or out of your purse or out of your Bible mm-hmm. and just say, Lord, I care about name your child. And I know you do. Yes. Would you do this and this and this and this and this? Just name it. Yes. And pray as big as your faith will let you. God Absolutely. cares. God loves your adult children. Yes. So you pray and just pray for them. Yes. And when we are praying, God is working. So have faith that he is working. There will be times, especially with adult children, that things don't happen as quickly as you want them to. And you just think to yourself, okay, I've been praying for months or I've even been praying for years and this is not happening in my child's life. But I have heard testimony after testimony of adult children who have 
come back to the Lord or gotten saved or gotten back in church, started living right because they had a parent who was praying and the parent doesn't even know all of the things that God was working on in that child's life, the conviction that was going on, or maybe people that they ran into that would talk to them about the Lord and would remind them of where they needed to be. So God is working. You need to be praying. Absolutely. And part of the part of the Bible teaching on the idea of the way of a transgressor is hard mm-hmm. is not only that when you make wrong choices in life, it results in a negative outcome. Yes, life can be frustrating. Yeah, but also <laughs> when you have a Christian parent praying for a wayward child, part of the the hardness of the transgression is that that tearing within. Mm-hmm. That, that you know they're they're torn you know between wrong choices and right choices between yes. what they were taught and what yes. they are doing mm-hmm. and the way of a transgression is hard because they're double-minded they're yes. unstable they yes. are totally torn they can't be happy mm-hmm. in either world right because on the one side they're rebellious on the other side they can't fully enjoy it because right. they know it's not right yes and so moms and dads both and i can't say it loudly enough pray for your children in faith believing yes. that god is working mm-hmm. and just keep praying because if your belly is right if you're praying god is working yes so and pray. when you're praying for your adult children don't pray for them just like you know i'm just praying the wrath of god down on you and I'm so upset at you and I can't believe you're doing this and I can't believe you're doing that. Um, You know, pray for them. Pray that God's will be done in their life because you know God's will is that they would love him and live for him. Absolutely. So Mm -hmm. pray that God's will be done, but also pray for yourself. Pray that the Lord would help you to guard your tongue. Pray that the Lord would help you to have a loving, affectionate attitude towards this wayward child. Pray that the Lord would help you to be humble in your approach to the child. So you pray for them. Secondly, we would say it. This is, I think, obvious, but you love them. You don't yes. stop loving your child because they're, you know, not not everything you would want them to be. Mm-hmm. You love them because they're your child and they are created in the image of God. Absolutely. And you love them through the hard times and you love them in the hard times. Mm-hmm. Yes. And you just say it. You you mm-hmm. text it. You write it. You. Yep. You show it, yes. you know, when it's their birthday, you let them know how much you love them. When it's yep. Christmas time, you let them know you love them. When yes. it's Thanksgiving, you love them. As much as in your power, you may have a, an adult child who doesn't want much to do with you because they are living absolutely opposed to your Christian living. And I, I'm very sad for you if that's what's happening. But as much as in your power, have a relationship with them, love them, have them over, meet them out, have coffee together do everything you can to have a relationship right. with them. We would add thirdly, don't allow negativity. Mm. And this is a huge one, isn't it? Yes, it is. Oh my goodness. It's so easy when things aren't well to be sarcastic, mm-hmm. uh, to be passive aggressive. Yes. Guard that, guard that, guard that. Absolutely. Do not allow yourself to fall into the prey of making sarcastic statements to make a point. Yes. And there may be times where you have to have a hard conversation. It, it might just happen, you know, if you're in the midst of having a genuine conversation about, mom, what is wrong with the way I'm living? Or what don't you see eye to eye? It, it may be a difficult thing to um, look at them and say, well, you know that the Bible says... And, and that's fine. You're presenting truth and, and hopefully you can present it lovingly, but that's totally different than, I can't believe you do that. Or did you do that in my house? I can't believe, no, we don't do that in my house or we don't use that language around here or whatever. You know, don't be sarcastic with it. Don't be passive aggressive, present truth and love. And other than that, Try to keep your mouth shut. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and and we would add to that the same idea is communicate, share concerns. Yes. When you are sharing concerns or addressing issues, you do it in a serious conversation mm-hmm. with a controlled tone. Yes. With a lowered voice. Mm-hmm. There's just a ton of truth about that. Yes. Communication is the key to building the relationship. You will have greater um Greater power, greater influence in your children's life if Mm -hmm. you have a greater relationship. Yes. So to that end, how do you build a relationship? You invest time and and talk. Mm -hmm. Time and talk are always the key to a relationship. Yes. And so, you know, you eat together. Mm -hmm. Uh, You you, you 
take time to do things together. Right. And you talk as often as your child is willing to talk, you talk. Right. And talk about just normal everyday things. Yes. You don't always have to have that hard conversation. Right. So what you're doing is building a relationship. And in the midst of communication, you know, it's, it's okay to share concerns. It's okay to build relationships. And I would say to you that it is still, it's okay as well to show respect. Yes, absolutely. Let your children know, mm -hmm. you know, I, I respect you as an adult. Yes. And you can even say to your child, hey, I know you have the right to make these decisions. And here's why I don't agree with them. You know why I don't agree with them. Mm -hmm. But I love you and I always will love you. And, and I don't think you can be right unless you do this. Yes. But it won't change the fact that I love and care about you. Absolutely. So you just always emphasize that. Mm -hmm. We would add one more thing before we run out of time. Make sure that you do right, even if they don't. Yes. Sometimes parents, when their child begins to go wrong, um, I don't know if it's out of loyalty or out of uh, maybe just discouragement, but mm -hmm. sometimes parents throw everything away, mm. let everything go that they've always believed to be right, and they just join the child. Right. Okay, fine. We'll just join okay, you. Okay. If you're going to be out of church, I'll be out of church too. Yeah, but moms yes. and dads, that will not help you. Mm -hmm. That will not help your children. Yes. That will undermine everything that really needs to happen in their life. Yes. And are these things hard? Yes. But don't let it be the identification of your life. Yes. Don't don't let it be like, well, you know what? I'm I'm a miserable failure and, and I am going to be depressed until I die. Mm. Uh, no, there are too many other areas of life where you can have the joy of the Lord, where you mm -hmm. can serve God, where things are well. If you have yes. one child that's not well and another one that is well, mm -hmm. you don't damage the relationship with the one that's well so you can have a relationship with the one that's not. True. You you have to keep all of these things in perspective and mm -hmm. continue to do right, continue to walk with God, stay in the Bible, right. keep a joyful, happy heart, mm -hmm. pray with others about it. And you don't have to be weird, but you can always, always, always do the right thing with a happy heart. Yes. That will make a difference in your life and in your child's life. Absolutely. So we're about out of time. What else mm -hmm. would you add to these? Well, I would say this would even apply all of these points about if you have adult children that you think need help, um, praying for them, loving them, don't allow neg negativity, do right, even if they're not in communication. All of these would apply too if you have adult children who are raising your grandchildren and you feel like mm, they could pick it up a little bit. They're not doing exactly what I would do. Now, first of all, they don't have to train their children exactly the way you did just because you did it in your home. Remember, they are a couple coming together. Your in-law was raised totally differently probably than your child was. And so let them come together and come up with their own training. And then also, you know, don't be sarcastic about it. If they're allowing your grandchild to do something that you're like, oh, I would never let my my kid do that. Don't make sarcastic remarks or passive aggressive remarks. And then don't just give unsolicited advice. If your daughter or son wants to, if they're just like, you know what, we're having a little trouble with the baby. Could you help us with our toddler or whatever? Then absolutely sit down with them and say, well, this is what helped us in training you. Um, but don't just give unsolicited advice, just pray for them. And then when your grandchild is with you, don't overstep your bounds as a grandparent and say, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna train this child, but you can have some rules in your house. Oh, no, when you come to Mimi's house, this is how we're going to do it. We're going to show you some respect and we're going to have some manners. Yes. And if, you know, it doesn't mean you should never talk to your adult children. If there's an area that is of concern, what you do is you schedule that and you ask their permission to talk to them about it. Yes. You, it's entirely fine to say, hey, uh, just at some time, could we sit down and talk about? Yes. And and just, you know, some thoughts I want to give you about that. Mm -hmm. And if you have a close relationship and the, that they feel safe with you, yes. then there's no reason why you can't have a very good conversation about these kind of things with yes. your adult children. True. Okay. Well, we brought this series to an end and we are so glad you joined us for these last, uh, what was it, six weeks or so mm -hmm. as we've talked about these issues. Hope you'll continue to join us here at the Keeping It Young podcast. If we can serve you, help you, answer any questions for you, please reach out. It would be our honor and joy to do so. Yes. And we look forward to that. Mm -hmm. Hope you have a great week ahead. And this week, we pray that you will serve the Lord with gladness. The Keeping It Young podcast is a Bax 5 media production.